This video is over set design and takes a closer look at renderings, models, and technical drawings. The set design process is how the set designer gets their ideas onto the stage. This process can last from weeks to months depending on the scope of the project. Step one is to read the script. Sounds obvious, right? But it's fundamental that the first thing a designer should do is sit down and read the script, even if he has read the play or seen it or even designed it before. All decisions should be rooted in the script, which is the blueprint the playwright gave you to tell their story. Step two is to meet with the director. Usually at the first meeting, you're going to discuss the director's concept for the show. Every director and every concept is different, so you should listen carefully to the director's input to help decipher what they envision for the end product, which is the finalized set. You may also come to this meeting with some ideas of your own. Step three is to conduct visual research. Sometimes this might happen before the director, at other times afterward, especially if the director's concept is markedly different than the original script. For example, when designing Shakespeare, I always wait and speak to the director about their concept because many directors will set it in a different location or time period. The visual research you conduct can come from a variety of sources. If you were designing a play in the 1700s, then it would probably be helpful to look at architecture and paintings from the period. If it is a modern day play, then newspapers, magazines, and photography are probably going to be where you draw your research from. Step four is to create rough sketches. Now that you have the director's concept in your head and have added a dash of research, it's time to mix it all together and start brainstorming. Remember that these rough sketches are just that, very rough. They may be on scrap paper, in a journal, or on a computer, and are usually in black and white whatever best helps you communicate the ideas that are forming in your head. Another reason they are rough is because they are just a communication tool and you'll likely change your mind and go back to the drawing board many times before arriving at the final product. Step five is to make a rendering or a model to show the director your final design for the show and to gain their approval. What you create, a rendering or a model, is largely up to the designer and what they are comfortable with. A rendering is merely a 2D image or drawing of the scenery, while a model is a 3D object showing the set in a smaller scale. Step 6. Create a ground plan and elevations. Once your rendering or model is approved, you can create a package of technical drawings that include the ground plan, which is a view from above, and the elevations, which is a view of each piece of scenery from the front. These drawings help the technical director, the person in charge of building your scenery, communicate with the carpenters and other fabricators. Here you can see an example of a ground plan or aerial view. It is as if a giant came along and pulled the roof off the theater and looked down inside. You can see the top of all the scenery and major props like furniture, as well as the thick walls of the theater and where the audience is seated. Step seven is to create painter's elevations. But wait, didn't we make elevations or front views of the scenery during the last step? Yes, but these elevations aren't for the carpenters, they are for the painters. So they show color, texture, and other details needed by the painters to realize your set exactly as you envision it. Step eight, after the carpenters have built your set and the painters have painted it, it's almost time to load in the set. The load-in process is when a crew brings all the scenic elements into the space safely and carefully. Everything is put in place, anchored so it is sturdy and ready for actors to use and abuse, and any last-minute final touches are added. Step 9 are the technical rehearsals. This is a period of time, usually a week or two, when all the technical elements and the actors come together for the first time. The play is run over and over again, stopping and starting to fix different elements until finally it is ready for an audience. Step 10, the show opens. Opening night is the first time a paying audience is allowed in to see the production. In most professional theaters, a set designer's job is largely done at this point as the backstage crew and stage manager are left to oversee the run of the production. 
After the show's run, which could last anywhere from days to weeks to months, a crew comes back in and strikes the set. Strike is the period of time it takes to dismantle the set and take it to storage or to the dumpster. In this next section, we are going to take a closer look at renderings, models, and technical drawings, such as ground plans and elevations. Renderings are two-dimensional images created by hand, or sometimes on computer, showing the entire set in full color. They usually feature a human figure to show the scale or size of the scenery. Without a human figure, it can sometimes be difficult to tell if a wall is 8 feet or 18 feet high, especially if it is non-realistic. These renderings are to scale, so they should be proportional and look like a snapshot of a moment in time from the play. They usually show the architecture of the theater, and you can see if it's a proscenium, thrust, arena, etc. Sometimes you might include the suggestion of the audience. In this design for The Living, we can see a suggestion of the audience. The audience is shown because this is an intimate type of theater space called a thrust, where the stage sticks out into the audience. Notice that the rendering is in color, uses a figure to show scale, and is taken from one vantage point in the audience. Theoretically, once a set is built, you will be able to find that vantage point in the house and compare the final set to the rendering, and if everyone did their job correctly, it should be almost identical. Here we have an image from Radio Golf, showing a dimly lit interior. Notice the walls are deconstructed, meaning they look like a chunk of the world was taken and put on stage. This is a realistic space, a real estate agency, but rendered in an unrealistic way, crumbling and detached from the rest of the world. There's a figure stage right to give a scale, a suggestion of light, and it appears that this image is a mixture of hand-drawn and computer-generated, not uncommon, uncommon in the 21st century. Here we have another interior set for the mystery of Edwin Drood. Note that this rendering does not feature a figure, but with the inclusion of things like tables and chairs, we can guess as to the scale. It is detailed and shows color and texture. This rendering for Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing is an exterior set, so we can see the cyclorama upstage. The cyclorama is a large piece of fabric that is stretched tightly behind the scenery. If you shine colored and textured lights on it, it takes on that color and texture. Here, it is being used for a beautiful sunset. If a designer chooses to, he can create a model instead of a rendering. Where a rendering is 2D, a model is 3D and shows the detailed set to scale. They are often created by hand, but digital models are becoming more popular as the software evolves. Like renderings, models also usually feature a human figure to give you a sense of scale, and to add a little life to the stage. This model is in half inch scale, meaning that for every foot on stage there is a half an inch on paper. For example, if the pillars are 10 feet tall on stage, then the model's pillars would be 5 inches tall. The model shows all major set pieces, including props like tables and chairs. There is a figure to show scale. Here we see the model side by side with the finished product. While some details have changed, such as the color of the furniture and the addition of lights to the ceiling, it is largely just like the model. This is a set designed by renowned designer and Yale professor Ming Cho Lee. In this model, we see the suggestion of audience seating, as well as the backdrop behind the set. It is detailed, including furniture, props, trees, and boulders. Here we see the model side by side with the finished product. Very little changed over the set design and production process, as you can see. Finally, here we have an example of a digital model created by computer. While this is a still image, in the software in which it was created, the director can walk around the set and see it from different vantage points, which is important for this particular set because it completely revolves to reveal the backstage. This is the front of the scenery for Act 1, which revolves completely for Act 2. 
Once the rendering or model has been approved, it is time to build it. However, before the set can go to the technical director and be built by the carpenters, the designer must create a set of technical drawings showing the specifications and construction of the set. This package of technical drawings consists of a ground plan, elevations, and painter's elevations. A ground plan, to recap, is an aerial view of the stage showing scenery and major props. An elevation is the front view of the scenery, showing individual scenic units standing upright. Painter's elevations are simplified elevations that show color and texture. Here we have a very rough hand-drafted ground plan for Jesus Christ Superstar. Note the stamp at the bottom right. This was created by a scenic designer that belongs to the United Scenic Artists Union. This is another example of a ground plan, this time for My Fair Lady. This ground plan is in quarter inch scale, meaning that for every foot on stage, there is a quarter of an inch on the page. So one inch on the page equals four feet in real life. A scale as small as this is necessary to fit a large theater onto a reasonably sized sheet of paper. Here we have a finalized ground plan for the Great American Trailer Park Musical. Notice the title block in the lower left-hand corner that identifies the show, the director, the set designer, and who drafted the ground plan, in this case, the set designer as well. You can see all scenic units used in the play, as well as the architecture of the theater and the sweeping curve of the apron in front of the proscenium. You may have noticed on the previous slide that the different pieces of scenery were labeled letters A, B, C, etc. Each piece would have to be drafted as an elevation, showing the scenic unit standing up in front of the point of view of the audience. These elevations show you the dimensions of the scenery, as well as details such as what it is constructed out of. Here we see an interesting piece of scenery that revolves with a jail door on one side and a wardrobe door on the other. This elevation is for a wall and door unit showing the various sizes of the scenery and suggestions for construction techniques. Finally, here we have a set of painter's elevations for Shrek the Musical, showing the scenery from the front. In this case, it's fabric that will be hung stage left and right as well as over the stage. This shows how each piece should be painted. Finally, a vocabulary recap. This has been set designs, renderings, models, and technical drawings. The end.